you know, right now we are in the middle of developing a series and a concept called Dreaming in Dark Places, a movement to hope. Dreaming in Dark Places, a movement to hope. And where we're going with this is the fact that in the life of David, in the life of David, he had an anointing, he had a gifting, he had a destiny, but he had some dark places. Many of us are right now dealing with our lives and feeling like we are in a dark place and we are being challenged, but God has a plan for our life. Right now, we're dealing with a very common text in the Bible. It is the story of David and Goliath, David and Goliath, and the challenges, the interesting thing is that it continues to bless us in new and profound ways, even though it's an ancient and powerful story. Last week, we started developing on the traits of a champion. What is the traits of a champion? So those are those internal things that are inside of us that will allow us to do. Now we're going to deal with the preparation of a champion. Those are the external things that will allow you to move forward. And next week, we're going to deal with the actions of a champion, the actions of a champion, where we're going to talk about how I act as a champion in this world. So right now, I want you to open your Bible, look on the screen, go to 17th chapter, 34th verse, 34th verse, and I'll go from... 34 to 40. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep sheep for his father. And when there came a lion or a bear and took a lamb from the flock of him and delivered it out of his mouth. And if he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and struck him and killed him. Your servant has struck down both lions and bears. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, for he has defiled the armies of the living God. The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion, from the paw of the bear, shall deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, go, and the Lord be with you. Then Saul clothed David with his armor. He put a helmet of bronze on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail. And David strapped his his sword over his armor, and he tried in vain to go, for he had not tested them. Then David said to Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not tested them. So David put them off. Then he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the brook and put them in his shepherd's pouch. His sling was in his hand, and he approached the Philistines. Let us pray. Father God, we are just so grateful that God is moving in the midst. Right now, I pray that you remove Coloma, you hide him behind the cross. You slow my mind, you slow my speech, you fill my head with the words that you would want your people to have. God, I'm praying for each watching right now, and we ask now that you will see their hearts, you will allow them to see you. In your holy name, amen. You know, we live in a country, we live in a country that has a lot of preparation in its DNA and its culture. Um, Dr. Sandra will tell you as a PhD in education, there goes a lot of process to become something in this country. You, you know, you start at kindergarten, then you go to... Um, elementary school, then you go to um, high school, then you go to college, and then you go to master's and bachelor's and PhD, and you know, they seem to have lined a path out for your success in this country that goes straight through the educational system. But I'm here to tell somebody today that God educates and leads us in different ways. That He doesn't need us to go to a specific institution to be a champion. He doesn't need us to be from a specific place to be a champion. He doesn't have to have a specific way for us to be a champion. He has designed and built us, and he has developed things around us that will know that we are preparing for something greater. So many of us disqualify ourselves from being champions, being what God calls us, because we do not conform and meet to what the world of man has said should be the way we do it. 
But I'm here to tell you that God has a plan for you and he's preparing you to be a champion. He has developed things in your life and he's put things around you that will allow you to meet greater challenges, will allow you to see greater things, will allow you to step up to a higher level. But you just have to tap into them and understand where they were. As I said earlier, as I said earlier, um, there's, I, I'm developing this concept of champion because I could have went right to the finish line, talked about that David slew Goliath and he jumped up and down and he did it. But first I wanted to deal with the emotional and internal integrity of a champion which dealt with their traits. Now I want to deal with the things that are external to their life, the things that are around them, the things that impact them that will allow them to move forward. That's a preparation. And then the final thing we'll deal with is action. So let's talk about preparation. Let me bring you up to speed on the story for those that are just watching for the first time. David, a young shepherd boy, goes to meet the army of Israel to deliver supplies for his brother, for his brothers, because they are on the front line. He comes to the scene and he sees the children of Israel are stuck in fear for 40 days because the champion of the Philistines, which is Goliath, has come out 40 mornings in a row and said, if any man be brave enough to face me, they need to step out right now and face me. It's 40 days, nobody's come out, no king, no warrior, no champion. But this young shepherd boy who was just delivering for Uber Eats to his brother came out and he's up there and he says, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't stand this reproach in God. And now you enter into this story. So David made the declaration last week that he would fight Goliath and now we're dealing with the impact of it. King Saul has David in front of him, and King Saul looks at him and says, you are just a little boy. And now we see Josh, we see the preparation for what God has, for, what God has done in David's life to get him ready for this moment. Here we go, here we go. My first point is your past equips you past equips you. You know, if you, if you look at it from, I'll, I'll use this piece of the scripture to work it through. Your servant used to keep sheep for his father, and when he came, there came a lion or a bear and took a lamb from the flock, I went after him and struck him and delivered it out of his mouth. And if he rose against me, I caught him by his beard and struck him and killed him. And your servant has struck down both lions and bears, and the uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, for he has defiled the armies of the living God. The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of the Philistine. You know, one of the challenges I find when people start dealing with their past, Jermaine, is they assume that their past disqualifies them. They assume the challenges and the issues and the problems that they've had in the past disqualify them from moving in the future. But what my Bible is telling me right now is that my struggles, my lions and my bears, those things that have attacked me, those things that I thought disqualified me, the position I thought that made me minor, it was just equipping and preparing me for my future. There's somebody that's walking around right now feeling shame because of where past. There's somebody right now that's feeling dejected. There's somebody right now that's feeling like their past has disqualified them. But I'm here to tell you, God wastes no experience. God is equipping you to move forward. Let me tell you, if you look at the battle um, that David had with the lions and bears, there's a few things that it does for him. First of all, it lets him know that he can't be defeated by, by the attack. Many of you right now are wondering if you can make it through, you can survive, you can get through stuff. But if you be honest, you start looking at your upbringing and the struggles you have. COVID is nothing. Some of you were trying to figure out how to pay for your education and do all of that stuff and struggle through stuff long before COVID. People have financial issues long before COVID. You fought through and you battled this. This battle we are fighting right now is nothing more than a minor distraction. Your preparation has put it through. There are those that don't have to shell, that haven't had to struggle, that haven't had to push, that haven't had to figure 
anything out and they're in trouble. But you and your bad self that's had to deal with the challenges of your life and deal with all the things that you've been through and deal with what God is, what the enemy has put in front of you. The battle that you are about to fight, you've been prepared for. Amen. Now, I was thinking about this thing. I was thinking about this thing. Um, we're in Silicon Valley. It's, you know, we got all the tech companies. We got all these people. We got all, the, you, know, you know. And if you listen to the recruiters and you listen to the companies and you listen, you know, one of the things as we start talking about diversity, they will say, well, you know, we don't have enough qualified candidates. We don't have enough qualified candidates. They don't have the right educational standard. I don't understand, but it puzzles me, um, Jermaine, how can a company founded by a dropout say I'm not qualified? How can companies founded by people that are dropouts tell me with my bachelor's and my master's and my PhD I don't have the right thing? Don't let people define you. I dare think. Sometimes I just want to tap some people on the shoulder and be like, you have lost your mind. It's like, we, we need data and you don't have the right qualification. I'm like, but your boss is a dropout. You mean like his life, ex you mean life experience doesn't count? But your chairman of your board was a dropout that used life experience that's now paying you. But I can't qualify for this job. Amen. I don't have the right qualifications. I'm not from the right place. Maybe it's I don't have the right skin color. Maybe I don't fit into the club. Maybe I don't own no Patagonias. Because I've been watching the ingenuity of people being disgraced and discarded and put aside because they don't fit a certain look, a certain thing. But let me tell you this. What you're going through, you can create more than the last dropout created because God has given you experience to do more. Amen. Don't ever let anybody say your experience invalidates you. Because what God has designed you for and what God has put you forward through he has built you. Okay. <sighs> Here we go. Here we go. The next point is, the next point is, the next point is, the next point is, is um, you must not conform to the world. As we prog progress in the story, as we progress in the story, as we progress in the story, <sighs> it goes, go. And the Lord be with you. And then Saul clothed David with his armor. And he put a helmet of bronze on his head. And closed him with a coat of mail. And strapped his sword over his armor. And he tried in vain to go. For he had not tested them. And then David said, said to Saul, I cannot go with these. For I have not tested them. So David put them off. Okay. In the book of Romans 12, chapter 2nd verse, it says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. My God. I'm here to tell you, don't conform to what people will have you do. You know, one of the interesting things that, 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 that's this is that David is putting on the finest armor in the world. He's putting on the armor of the king. It is the best. It's designed to be the most protective. It's designed to have it all. But what David knows right there is that this is not how God created him to wear this armor. You got to understand it's so interesting, Troy. David was anointed to be king one chapter before. He now puts on the king's armor the next chapter, but realizes that the predecessor's armor is not for him. Look at that. When God gives you experience and he's preparing you to be a champion, do not put on the armor of the predecessor. Don't be a cheap 
expectation of somebody else. I need to really let the people of God know that way, the way you are, the way you think, the way you articulate, the way you speak, the way you do things, you were designed by God in that way. Don't try to be like the other one. You know, you can get best practices. You can learn, but don't be a cheap imitation. Because this is what happens when you become a cheap imitation. You're weighed down by their stuff, their baggage, their stuff is on you. I need to tell you that you are perfect the way you are. You have the right mind, you have the right speech, you have the right equipment to fight the battle for yourself. But what I see in this world is too many people trying to conform to bad standards. Let me break this down. Women don't have to act like men to be in the workplace. Amen. You don't have to sell out your culture in order to move ahead. Amen. You don't have to take any old jokes and just sit there and act as if it's all right. You don't have to, as a young person, go to certain places and do certain things to be accepted. I'm trying to tell you that you don't have to have low self-esteem and accept anything and do any way and be how anybody else wants you. Because when God has designed you and he has a plan in your life, you cannot conform to this world. I need somebody to get that in your spirit because you got to do you the best way you can. Because when you start doing you the best way you can, God starts blessing you the best way he can. Because he's not trying to give you some old, tired blessings that suit another situation. He's developing new blessings just for you in a specific way. But you've got to walk in your own way. You got to talk in your own way. You got to speak in your own way. You got to say it in your own way. Sometimes people say to me, you know what, uh, Pastor Smith, um, you, you, you're, not, you're not a good Methodist. You got lights in your church. <laughs> right? I, you know, I don't have enough wood paneling and wood pulpit, but you know what? I got a uh, university got to be us. We got to do church the way we do church. We got to sing to the glory of God the way we sing to the glory of God. Because what it is, is that we have to be designed to be uniquely us. I wish, I wish, I wish, I wish I could speak to every young black man and black woman that is in Gen Z right now. I want to let you know that as America reforms itself, as America starts reshaping itself, it doesn't need you to be Martin Luther King. It doesn't need you to be John Luke. It needs you to be you because we've got new challenges. You know, I was, I, was, I was listening to the news this week, and it became apparent to me our country's profoundly broken. It's broken. We knew it was broken. We knew long before that it was profoundly broken. I mean, this is not a news flash to me. But when we have armed men that are willing to go try to kidnap a governor, we have crossed the Rubicon. Because you know what they used to tell me, Josh? What you see in public is, not, is only a, a little bit of what they talk about in private. Amen. So we need new black leaders that are willing to call out, not just so I can be better and I can move ahead, but we need to call out systems of white supremacy in this world that will be exclusionary. I don't care how your suburb is. I don't care what it is. But right now, we need to call out all the exclusionary systems. And I know there are people that are watching me in Silicon Valley. You're feeling high and mighty. You're feeling like we, you know, we got it all together. We live in a city that won't let people from another town into a park. Our state has the highest group of hate groups. Right now, I think we have a higher calling on our life. We have police violence that is brutal in our area. Right now, we have people that won't build affordable housing because they're so interested in living in their house. They want to keep their million dollar house while people are living on the streets. So right now, I need people that won't be conformed to the world because we have to speak the truth. <sighs> All right. Now, the last point slightly different, slightly different. He says, use the gift you've been given. 
Then he took his staff and his hand. So he put down the sword of the king and chose five smooth stones from the brook and put them in his shepherd's pouch, his sling in hands, and he approached the Philistine. <sighs> he took his staff in his hand. He walked to the brook and picked up five smooth stones and put them in a shepherd's pouch. Now, uh, Malcolm Gladwell wrote a great book of David and Goliath, and, 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 and he talks about why it would have been easy for David to beat Goliath because of the weight of the armor and the sweat in his eyes. And they believed that Goliath had a gland issue, so he was a giant, but he had a massive pain in his body. So his enemy was this big, tall person that had medical issues. But I want you, but, and you know, Gladwell does a great job of making it logical. But it became obvious to me, uh, Troy, that Malcolm Gladwell has never been in a fight. Because you five, six, five, seven, and you walking up to a seven foot person with five stones, <laughs> a pouch, and a stick, and he got a sword and armor on. I don't know if, if I would be that brave. I don't know if I would be willing to take that fight. I don't know if I even have the shot. But what I realized is that David used the tools he had. He used the tools that God gave him. He used the tools that made sense for him. He didn't try to repurpose somebody else's tools. You see, the last point was do not conform. This point is use what you got. There are so many businesses, there's so many lives, there's so many degrees, there's so many things that can happen and change if you use what God gave you. You can fight those large and impossible fights if you only use what God gave you. Some of us are too busy trying to take new self-help classes. Some of us are too busy trying to read new books when God has equipped and built us and designed us, and we know the tools we have. I don't need you to take on anybody else's behavior. I don't need you to act a certain way. I don't need you to be different. I need you just to do the, way, the thing the way that God told you to do it. Amen. You know, one of the things um, I, I, tell, I tell public speakers and young preachers is um, watch other preachers, watch other speakers, but don't imitate them. Whatever your field is, watch them. Um, I, I, I was blessed to, um, to have as my mentor in ministry one of the greatest preachers of a generation. I mean, Josh, that, that w, Bishop W. Dan Moore, he could preach every Sunday. I mean, he make you jump up on the pews, people running around. I was like, Ugh. And Troy, I remember sitting up there and I gave my first trial sermon, and I'm like, I'm not W. Dan Moore. <laughs> But what he did for me, Josh, which is amazing, is he encouraged me to be uniquely Coloma. He says, if, 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 if how you construct sermons is the way you construct them, do it this. Make sure it's theologically right, but build it this way. If that's the way you present, present the best way you can. Putting and giving opportunities for me to be the best me. He never said, you need to make a point like this, and you need to structure it like this, and you need to say it like this. He'll kill me if it's bad theology, though. But you got to understand, he said, use the gifting that God gave you. I preached my child's sermon with seven other preachers, seven other preachers, a lot of preachers that night, man. And I remember um, being so self-conscious, uh, Dr. Sandra, Dr. I mean, the place was hopping, there's 500 people in the room, everybody jumped, they got some great preachers. The lady before me said, God bless me so much, she took her wig off and, and the whole place was up and running because, you know, she said, I got, I got, I'm so happy I got to take my wig off. And I got up there and talked. 
But what God was showing me at that time, and I'm using myself as an example, is that I needed to pick up my own pouch and my own five smooth stones, and I need to stick it in the bag, and I need to go fight my battles because they are giants I am going to destroy. Right now, I need to tell you wherever you are, I need some people right now to pick up your five smooth stones. That could be your ingenuity. That could be your creativity. That could be your perseverance. That could be your intelligence. That could be your presentation. Whatever your five smooth stones are, I need you this week to just write out the five things that are your smooth stones and dig deeper into those smooth stones because right now you've been given all of the innate traits to go further, do better, go higher, but you're too busy trying to pick up the king's armor, king's sword, when it's not built in design for you. I need to tell you, you need to be more independent in what you're doing, and you need to find your own five smooth stones that you can pick up because those are the things that God has designed and built for you. Those are the things that are special to you. And when you start living in your own truth, living in your own truth, living in your own truth, living in the way that God has for you, you will see that you will be blessed in your own way. I'm not here to tell you to be like this and be like that one and act like this and move like that. I'm here to tell you I need a generation to pick up five smooth stones because we have got some Goliaths we need to destroy from social injustice, from bad medical systems from marginalized communities, from in inequity in this world. And I need an army of Davids that are willing to pick up five smooth stones because we are on a destiny to change the world. But I just need some Davids with some five smooth stones. I just want you to use your gifts because God has blessed you. Whew. Let's, let's pray. Father God, there's somebody under the sound of my voice out there in the world on the screen. That is struggling. with low self-esteem that is struggling with doubt that is wondering if you are properly placed if you are a champion or you are just marginalized but God I pray that they get this in their spirit today that their past is not a disqualification it is an equipping that they don't have to be like the world told them to be so they don't have to conform. And that they've been given specific gifts that they need to use to find. God, this week, I'm asking that you break the yoke of doubt and self-esteem in people's lives that you speak to their hearts and their minds and you let them know that they are a champion. You let them know that they are more than conquerors. You let them know that they've been prepared for a new season. So speak into their life right now. In your holy name, amen.